So, my background is in… Uh, I'm a full-time pastor now, so we, we minister in Sri Lanka. Uh, but I was uh, once upon a time head of Department of Pharmacology in the medical faculty and most of my research drugs had to do with the brain. So, my research subjects are epilepsy, Parkinsonism, aspirin-like drugs, migraine, serotonin-based diseases. So, uh, about six years ago when I saw children jittery, yeah, I said there's something going wrong. At the same time, many children were being diagnosed as ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I had a long chat with the professor of pediatrics, my former colleague. He said, Lalit, we have defined ADHD, but I never prescribe methylphenidate because intrinsically inside me I know this is wrong. So that led me into a lot of um, thinking, reading, as you know, when you have to read off the internet, you are facing two camps, the absolutely pro-ADHD camp and the absolutely anti-ADHD camp. Internet is like that. You can't get a middle view. So I had to think through basics and these are the conclusions we came to. Of course, I had the benefit of seeing children affected with jitteriness. The three symptoms are um, impulsivity, intention, and hyperactivity. That's the triad of symptoms on which doctors diagnose ADHD. I came to the conclusion that at least 75% uh, of diagnosed ADHD is the result of watching the digital screen too much and getting digitalized behavior. So I coined the term Digitox. So we developed uh, empathic remedial procedures without drugs to correct the digital jitteriness children had got. So we do relearn, retrain, remanage. I have seen about 300 uh, children. I insist that parents should come. And usually uh, the dad, uh, the mom phones because she owns the problem and dad, dad dodges the problem. Uh, so I came to realize DAD stands for deny and dodge. So. Uh, will you ask you about are you like that? Uh, so uh, I kept seeing children and kept theorizing, kept conceptualizing. Then I started writing. Ma many nights I would go to sleep saying I don't understand that, I can't connect that. And I would pray on it and I wake up in the morning getting understanding. So a lot of my understanding I have to say was as I have a background on neurophysiology of how drugs work and pathologies work. At the same time, I got a lot of help from, I'll have to say, the Lord helped me to think through some of this, lot of this stuff. Uh, there's a scripture that I came across in the Word of God that quite fitted the present generation's predicament. There's a, now in a secular lecture, I don't quote scripture and verse, but some places I get to quote uh, it, it looks like words of wisdom. So I will say, here are some words of wisdom from ancient book. At present time, I have done uh, training lectures on digital science, right learning, curriculum, career choices to uh, thousands of police officers, uh, medical students, doctors, lawyers, nurses training schools, uh, many, 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 many schools and many, many banks. So it becomes an open door because they think this is the, they, they know this is a very necessary uh, subject. So it's a, it makes an open door for the church. For long I prayed in our nation that church will have an open door to the city. Because in our nation, we, uh, uh, our nation is a very, very, very beautiful nation. But beauty and tragedy go hand in hand in our nation. So for a long time I prayed, Lord, make a church a real door to the city where people will want to come to the city. So this is a needy area that the city is helpless regarding digitalized children and youth and the church can do much. So here is the scripture. Scripture, there is a generation that curses their father and bless and do not bless their mother. So their fracture is greater with the father, less with the mother. That is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their own filth. So you know it's a generation that experiments with uh, 
sex and other things and they don't think it's filthy. So moral standards and moral barriers, boundaries have been completely shifted. There is a generation of how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. So they always want what they don't have. And I am suggesting to you that the digital screen sets up this behavior. Uh, uh, there is a generation whose teeth are like swords and their jaw teeth like knives. So their words are very stabbing and rude. Now you must understand I'm not criticizing, I'm only observing. So when I do this lecture for school children, I don't mention these things. I mention this thing to the older generation for them to understand. The word of God has wisdom. The word of God diagnoses a problem and obviously the word of God also must be having a remedy, isn't it? What it diagnoses, it treats. The, to devour the poor of the earth and the needy from among men. So there is a real consumerist greed that is going on. So the poor, uh, poor have to be annihilated. So there are a lot of all kinds of global mechanisms going off to annihilate the poor so that the very small, minuscule minority can become very rich. And very easily, Christian theology can subscribe to this kind of thinking, have more to consume for ourselves without considering our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread and not give me my daily bread. Because when the, when the culture goes one way, it is easy for the church to run with the culture, then run against the culture. Uh, sixth characteristic of this generation is the leech has two daughters crying, give, give, three things that are never satisfied, four things never say enough. So the digital screen sets up children, not only by advertisement, not only by the things they portray, also their dopamine, S uh, serotonin cycles get disturbed so that they never have enough. I'll come to that a little more scientifically later. Uh, finally, the eye that mocks at his father and despises to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out. So I have called this the raven spirit, that they can't see what is right and they consume all the time, make a lot of noise, wh while this is the diagnosis, we must find solutions and the church has to get involved in this trouble. Martin Luther said if the church is battling battles, is not battling the battle at the forward defense line where the battle is most fierce, church will become irrelevant. So if we don't address, have our programs enough to really address the situation of parents losing children, church losing children, studies losing children, Sanity losing children. I feel we have to be passionate on this and fulfill Jesus' first commandment, first great commission, let the children come to me. I, I heard it like that. So we have a passion that children must come to him. That was his first great commission before he gave Matthew 28, 19. He said, let the children come to me. So I feel church is a very good, in, it has a very good opportunity to offer the city so much remedial procedures where the church, city can, its, can bring its children to the embrace of Jesus when the church gets geared up with empathic remedial procedures which are very easily taught, trained, communicated. Digital and stimulant effect has Five components, maybe more there. Uh, t even the time length a child is on the digital screen is beyond 25 minutes. The neurons shift from preferred mode directional firing to multi-directional non-preferred mode firing. So that's a technical term. From preferred mode firing to non-preferred mode firing. Similarly, the neurochemistry, the homeostasis, the normal state, changes to allostasis and if it not given time to recover as as Etienne said it will get, get into continuous allostasis which means a continuous status like stress that is not good the cause is digital stress and the effect of the digital toxicity will be defined by 
the PPI of the smartphone or whatever screen. So higher the PPI, PPI is pixels per inch, higher the PPI, more the neurochemical and the neuronal effect on the brain. Normally in my public lectures, I ask for a vote because I always speak to parents and teachers. So will you vote with me on this? Understood or difficult to understand? What am I saying? Higher the PPI of a smartphone, more effect it will cause on the child's brain. Vote on it. Yeah, thank you for voting. We Sri Lankans vote all the time. So even in other countries, we, we have all kinds of elections. Yeah. We, we, get, uh, we get withdrawal symptoms if we don't have elections. Uh, the rate of pixel change in a cartoon frame or digital game also affects the neuronal chemistry and the neuronal behavior. Now, older cartoons may use 1,000, 2,000 pixels at a time. Newer cartoons and digital games use hundreds of thousands of pixels in one frame. Can you package that? Okay. Intensity and variability of sound and color. Now, all of normal life is light blue, green, a few a bit of, uh, bit of uh, brown and green, the man's world, and for the ladies' sake, God did violet, uh, pink, and roses, and so on. So that's all the normal world has. But the cartoon world is always luminous green, luminous orange, black, magenta, and the colors change very fast, and the sounds change very fast. Agreed? All that affects the neuro neuronal behavior and the neurochemistry of the brain. Time of exposure is much more when the child is exposed to the screen after 6 p.m. So, basic uh, advice I give is, please try to do your uh, that, that little digital bribe that you say, darling, let it be at 4 o'clock, not, af not after 6 o'clock, that 25 minutes, shall we do it at 4 o'clock, you know? You have to negotiate with the child to get the digital screen time out of before 6 p.m. Yeah, yeah, we have to try to do this before 6 p.m. because after 6 p.m., melatonin begins to secrete. So. Every little, every child should see natural sunset. Natural sunset is the, is the trigger for melatonin secretion. Melatonin secretes from a very small gland called the pineal gland. You heard oxytocin comes from the pituitary gland. Mel melatonin comes from the pineal gland. And seeing normal sunset is the trigger for melatonin secretion and good sleep. So even people in working in offices with curtains all around and not seeing sunset, maybe at 5.30 either you should go home or at least open the curtain and have a gaze on the sunset. Uh, that is important for immunity also. As, uh, as uh, Etienne touched on it, neuro immune, immuno uh, behavior, uh, morning sunset and e morning sunrise and evening sunset is biologically important. Then if you multitask at any time, it is injurious, you get a multitasking milkshake brain. So multi I think Bra uh, Brad will talk about this more tomorrow. Uh, multitasking br milk milkshake brain is not where we want to go. If adults keep their attention span for 45 minutes, that is every hour you intentionally do one thing for 45 minutes, you don't get Alzheimer. Lifelong, do one thing for 45 minutes every hour. Don't do multitasking. Don't go Instagram, Facebook, wine, chat, you know, don't do that. Do one thing for 45 minutes. Can I have a vote on that? Then you don't get Alzheimer. This is true for adults. Maintain your attention span. More about it later regarding children and learning. And of course, sleep deprivation contributes to the digital toxicity having watched the screen. So in, in Colombo, we say preserve screen for essential study. Preserve screen time for essential study. Minimize entertainment time on the screen, okay? Now, this is a neuron. It's not as handsome as Etienne's neuron. Nonetheless, it's a neuron. Uh, so neuron at rest in the morning. So sleep is really God's dream we were programmed. When I do... a uh, public lecture. Uh, we have banks and schools in Sri Lanka that have Catholic executives, completely Christian schools, then my Christian content can increase. 
But when I have to do <coughs> the training in a more strict conservative Buddhist environment, then I have to reduce on the God part of it. But I keep dropping things intentionally. There's a design, it's God's dream weaver program. I just casually say, thank God, it's like this. It's not casually at all. It's, it's intentional. So depending on where I speak, I increase or reduce the God content. Uh, so this is the neuron and every neuron acts, the con this is the synapse, acts through a neurochemical transmitter. So in thought science thinking, you have already heard about oxytocin. In working learning management, dopamine and serotonin are important neurochemical transmitters. Dopamine works for salience, that is, work to the focus. In English, you have the saying, get to the salient point, correct? So salience is by dopamine. You keep doing one thing to the decreed end. Uh, then serotonin takes over satiety, satisfaction, assistantia, I have another curve. Now, through the day, this additional neurochemicals begin to accumulate at the synapses. So 6 p.m., God switches on the melatonin-driven God's Dream Weaver program or sleep. During proper sleep, the glymphatic system, the glial cells, work on the brain and remove all the additional neurochemicals that are hanging around from 12 hours of work. So you have to get your sleep properly. To get sleep properly, you have to stop the LED screen some hours before sleep. And as for children, they should not be on the LED screen. LED screen is the pixel screen. Should not be on it before sleep. Now, laptops and backtops are backlit driven. Laptops and uh, desktops are backlit driven. They have, which means backlit, which means they have a LCD screen before the LED screen. So when you have hard work, long work, do it on your desktop or laptop. Don't do it on your iPad, tab, and smartphone. Can I have a vote on it? Yeah. If you have long work to do, do it on your laptop and desktop. Because the photon infiltration of the retina is less with the laptop and the desktop. Now, of course, you get night mode and other ways, other screen adjustments are there to prevent the pixel effect on the retina. There are even goggles. So those who are on virtually 18 hours of on screen for graphic designs and so on, there are photon cutting, LED blue light cutting goggles. You, you know that. Yeah. So this is a neuron. That's a well-behaved neuron after the Dream Beaver program had uh, attended on it. Now, when children are sleep disturbed because they have been looking at the LED screen, though they are physically sleeping, they'll be jittery. They, they'll, you know, they'll do that. You can observe it yourself. And they wake up in the morning unrefreshed, memory unstored, and they'll cook up a shindi. That is, in, a, in, in Sri Lanka, we have this shindi, which means they, they wake up grumbling and uh, can't go to school because they are sleep disturbed. Now, in many homes, there's a 40-year-old uh, boy, child, who is also sleep uh, digitally addicted. Do you know his name? That's right, that DAD chap. So he, so he also wakes up in the morning and he also starts grumbling. Uh, so in Sri Lanka, we say, did you get up from the wrong side of the bed? Any other, any other country saying that? Did you get up on the wrong side of the bed? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> this is the learner management worker curve. So when we sit down to something, let's say reading a newspaper, you will read or, or your study book, you will do, 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 do roughly for 45 minutes. And then you get a sense of sit back and did I understand it? Did I study? That's self-check. So do, do, do is dopamine, salience, working to a focus. And then it goes down. These are thought this brain, uh, these not muscles, this, this brain. Uh, and then serotonin takes over, serotonin tracks take over for satiety. Well done. That needs adjustment. It's a self-check. 
So what does serotonin do in the learning cycle? You do something and then you get a feeling of, did I get it right? No, I should go and study it again, like that. Now when the child is on the digital screen, dopamine doesn't come down. Dopamine keeps going up. Secondly, physiological action is on dopamine one receptor. When the child is on the digital screen, it shifts to dopamine two receptor, which is addictive behavior. So I call it electronic cocaine. Brad calls it digital cocaine. That's the name of his book. He'll be doing it tomorrow. So when the child is too long on the digital screen, what happens? His dopamine keeps going up and allostatic stimulation takes over in the brain and stress-related brain patterns come up in the child when the child is too long on the digital screen. Can I have a vote on that? Now, you will hear me saying child because under the age of 12, the age effect is severe. Over the age of 13, it is less so, but less so meaning what happens to a child under the age of 12 in one hour will take about two hours to happen over the age of 12 or 13. This happens to us also. Uh, so the, the child loses her or his sense of self-check. Now, children have to be trained always to do things. They, they have to be put on a worker learning management track and they look back and see what they're doing. And they, are they have to be trained from young days to keep an attention span. When the in our school, child goes to school at age five and the class is usually 30 minutes. Now, a child is supposed to sit in the class and learn something for 30 minutes. A 30-minute attention span doesn't come just like that. You have to develop from second year, third year of life. So how does a child get an attention span? You know, your daughter has a doll and she gets up, doll gets up, doll has to go to school. She has to, you know, she has to brush her teeth, doll brushes her teeth, doll washes up, doll dresses up and goes to school. And that is the, that's your daughter's play bench or work bench. There's always a desk in it. And if you can afford a playroom for your daughter, it's excellent. Work bench. And she sits on her side. Who's the teacher? She's the teacher. Doll is the student. And the, she's teaching the doll and she teaches what, what she knows, Baba, Black Sheep, Gentle Jesus, Meek and Mild, whatever she teaches. And then it is lunchtime, school is over, hungry, and the doll comes home. All that takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Did you understand that? So you are intentionally creating an attention span for a child, same with building blocks, same with design play activities. So intentionally you design the child for increasing attention span, not only for length of attention span, also depth of attention span. That's what makes brain brilliant. So we have a slogan, no one is born brilliant, but you are trained brilliant, which means you may have the potential and you may make the potential stupid. Then we have another, another slogan, screen is smart, but the child becomes stupid. We have another slogan, best cartoons are the cartoons children don't see. So these are some, you know, you know what slogans are. They are, they are effect to make a punchline. They are meant to make a punchline. Did you understand these two curves? Uh, so we work on these curves. So um, the wife cooks, 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 cooks for 45 minutes and she's very satisfied. It is a, a good meal and my husband will li like it. Then the husband comes and he eats, eats, eats for 45 minutes and he's also satisfied and that makes a good marriage. Heaven comes home. That's how the two of them keep the same attention span, but for different things. This is how it is in Sri Lanka. I'm, I'm sure it's different in Kasi's home, but that's how. So what is attention? I have already done some of this. Salience, dopamine does it. Satiety, self versus serotonin does it. This is, of course, quite, uh, quite concise kind of talking, but it gives a fair insight into what happens and how to manage your children and youth and how to manage your salience and satiety. Uh, early bonding by mother uh, causes the child to have a good attention span. After all, if the child does not get attention in the first few months, you can't receive what you don't get. 
So mother gives attention, child gets attention, that's how the attention span comes. Listen to this. There's research on this, that more deeply the mother bonds, greater the IQ possibility of a child. Give me a wave on this. Yeah, it's so important. Default mode network of thought is be still and know that I am God. So we all run on a default mode network of thought, DMN. It's basically contributed by the dopamine-driven dopamine -driven, uh, salience and the serotonin-driven satiety, the two working together hour after hour, hour after hour, you keeping your attention span, no multitasking, you work to the point and you have a self-check, this makes default mode network of thought. When the child is on the dopamine-driven digital screen or the dopamine-driving digital screen, he never gets self-check. He's never into checking back, how was it what I did? He's on the next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. So I call this child abuse by parents because parents gave the digital screen. You have to understand this. Why do children don't have conscience? Because they never got a chance to check back and see how was my building blocks? How did I do it? Because the digital screen drives them on and on and on. No check back. So it's a serious problem. We have created a generation of youth who have no sense of check back. Whatever they do is right. They are on to the next thing without considering the consequences of the last thing. Correct? Yeah. So the church must say, we must stop this. We must find ways and means. Of course, stopping it doesn't mean prohibition. It means accommodating these cycles of salience and society in church programs, particularly looking at children and youth. And church has to adjust to make church nearer to them wherever they are. So if the church drives the program, they won't be there. Millennials, millennials want to be involved in the decision, involved in the action. So you have to get them to create the program and you have to start it from about age 10. If we want our youth to be in church. Intentionally you have to do things that they decide, you coordinate, you give the impetus, you are the catalyst, you are the one who gives the framework. They feel that we are starting and we are doing. And, and you know that these people are very, they are, they are very socialist minded. They are not, uh, so, so if, if, if a generation is gathering a lot of stuff, uh, the youth will not come with it. If you give them social work, let's go to the neighborhood, clean them up, let's distribute what clothes we have. They want their activity oriented, they will take on projects and they will do. And they don't want to die for Jesus, they want to live for Jesus. Our generation wanted to die for Jesus. They want to do something that is living and we have to accommodate all that in our church programs. Of course, in my secular programs, I will not be saying all this. Salience and satiety. Normal brain activity has dopamine U-curve and serotonin U-curve. With continual digital stimulation, dopamine does not come to resting level. This causes drive, impulsivity, agitation, addiction, repetitive, reflexive, reactive behavior. Serotonin cannot exercise its satisfaction. Many other chemical transmitters are in disarray. Brain asks for more chemicals. So there's an internal chemical imbalance in the brain, serotonin fighting dopamine. Both are out of control. So when internal intrinsic brain chemicals, brain molecules are in disarray, that brain asks for external chemicals. Did you understand that? This is the digital setup for drug abuse. That's my professional lecture to doctors, digital setup for drug abuse. If you want this material, it's, um, it's available on my blog. 
I can post material. One particular article I brought because it's technically completed. Each of you can have a copy of co technically complex. So I put it on print and brought to give you each a copy so that you can just go through it slowly and understand the technicalities. Uh, so many other chemical transmitters are in disarray. So every disturbed brain chemical asks for another chemical. That's why we have a generation looking for substance abuse. So ecstasy, dancing, crystal meth, all that is part of the chemicalized brain behavior. To add to that, in our country, coaches recommend for football, for soccer and rugger for second half, Red Bull and Wild Elephant caffeine-filled energy drinks. Now, you know caffeine-filled en energy drinks are dangerous. And, and you know some f physical nuttos who are very, very concerned about their uh, exercise rhythm fell dead while doing exercise in the evening. You know that? You know that? I don't know that. Yeah, because they are in under oxygen, high carbon dioxide, air conditioned gymnasiums. A lot of people sweating it out, perspiring. That's not the place to do exercise. You have to do exercise when the sun is going down. And that's the last bit of your cortisol, adrenergic drive is coming down. So you have to allow the God-given cortisol, growth hormone, adrenergic drive to come down. But executives at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock run to gymnasiums and they are on a treadmill. And if they are adding to that caffeine drinks, you, will get, you, you could get a cardiac arrhythmia. At least 3, 4, 5 high-performing Indian young executives at the age of 40 fell dead because of this. Did you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we understand, uh, but we don't want to understand. <laughs> Good cartoons. Only 30 minutes a day, every other day, never the same cartoon, because children become brand loyal easily. Children should be brand loyal only to parents. I need a vote on that. If children are introduced very young to aliens, to Ben 10 and whatnot, they become very loyal to that character. So you're allowing an alien to steal the heart of your child young, which is inadvisable, isn't it? You may never recover that time. So don't uh, allow the same cartoons, flip the cartoons, don't allow that brand loyalty. And purchasing allied uh, items feeds the addiction. You reinforce an addiction. No violent or spooky programs. Uh, so the thief steals from kids. Their parents' time as parents indulge beyond work. Their brain brilliant activity as they are given to the screen. Attention span and depth as their salience and focus reduce. Their sense of satiety and self-check is lost to the screen. Their character and confidence as they are given gadgets rather than love, time and hugs. Correct? Thief stealing from kids, what a tragedy. Manners and social interactions as they learn rude mocking from cartoons and get into isolated selfie behavior. Their innocence, they their innocence is lost as they stumble into sexual misadventures. Their physiological sleep is robbed as melatonin secretion dips. Their healthy nutritional habits um, go off as digital stimulation drives people into junk food snacking. Now. Serotonin is also the neurochemical transmitter involved in food satiety. That is, when we have a nice meal, we feel full, correct? We feel, ah, that was a nice meal. It's not a gastric feeling, it's a brain feeling. That comes from the satiety center. For that, serotonin must work normally. Uh, and that's the feeling that you get when you eat fruit. You feel nice, tryptophan has gone in. And this is completely disturbed in children uh, who are on the digital screen. They don't want to have proper meals. They will want snack food here and there, and they find which foods will keep them stimulated furthermore. So they'll go for junk food snacking, and in addition, the digital stimulation is driving cortisol. So they become obese, childhood obesity, childhood steatosis, liver changes of the little children, even childhood cirrhosis, uh, abdominal migraine and classical migraine, 
all kinds of childhood diseases have increased and high cortisol means low immunity. So children are prone to more infections. A lot of childhood diseases are spun off from the screen. Uh, I have written books on it, so please take some books. They describe in detail what I am saying quickly. Also, please, uh, uh, please write down inconsistencies in my argument because I'm also learning, I'm also thinking, I'm conceptualizing things that were not there in books. So we can make mistakes when we are conceptualizing out of nothing, you know. So check me out on if I sound inconsistent. Yes, so food habits have to be restored. There's another thing we found and we do in our empathic learning center. These children are all digitalized, isn't it? At this stage, we, I want to tell you the most brain brilliant time of a child is the feeding time. Feeding time is a wonderful time to make brain brilliant. It's the most empathic time till the child is about three and a half or four. Empathy comes from the feeding time, mother bonding with the child. And that feeding time being interrupted, in, invaded by screen is a terrible thing. Please don't do this. Please don't do this. It's the most, it's a time you can make your child's brain brilliant. And it's a time the child must get into touching food learning shapes, then he looks at food, and then he brings the stuff into his mouth. 40% of our neurons go in the motor cortex and sensory cortex are around fingers, buccal cavity, and eyes. So the brain, the, so the feeding time is an excellent time for speaking, infusing language, because language is learned in the midst of empathy. So child's most empathic bonding time is feeding time. So even in breastfeeding, mother, mother must continually speak to the child, IDS, infant-directed speech. Always speak, don't make foolish sounds. Children are not foolish. Children are in a brain-absorbing state, so don't say, guru, 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 guru. that's useless. Speak your language to the child. Uh, really meaningfully speak. Uh, so... Preserve the child's feed time as much as possible. Uh, to, uh, if mom can feed the child in the morning, and at, if you are not there for lunch, dad feeding the child in the night. What a great thing, isn't it? Now, we learned it today that even dad can secrete oxytocin in the child. Why not try? So, neurotoxicity is... Uh, uh, neurotoxicity is when neurons give up preferred mode unidirectional firing and turn to non-preferred multidirectional firing of neurons when kid is on the screen with continual pixel photon bombardment. Understood? Neurotoxicity is when neurons give up preferred mode unidirectional firing. That's how they should do. That's how God designed them. If the child is too much on the digital screen, the neurons get into non-preferred mode, multi-directional firing. That is, one neuron is trying to respond to too many inputs. It's in a jittery state. That manifests in the child as jittery and impulsive. Neurochemical transmitters, dopamine and serotonin function outside their optimal U-curve uh, uh, when it should be it should be in homeostasis because these drugs function optimally in that two curves you saw when that is disturbed that's not good uh, a bit of a classification of children so you may understand your children and these children get labeled as ADHD I am recommending to my profession don't label children ADHD because ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, works on a triad of symptoms, hyperactivity, impulsivity, inattention. Any child can move in this range. So these are symptoms and not diseases. Once upon a time, drugs were manufactured for diseases. Now upon a time, diseases are manufactured for drugs. 
That's the fact of the pharmaceutical industry. Shall I repeat it? There are a whole lot of chemical molecules that the drug companies want to get into the market and couldn't get into the market. So it failed in one sphere. It didn't catch the market in that sphere and it was not profitable. Now they manufacture, get some symptoms and they make a syndrome and they start making that drug, a certain drug available for, for that field with a manufactured disease. Then lecturers have to become senior lecturers, senior lecturers have to become associate professors, associate professors have to become professors, you need research. And in the medical profession, it is drug companies that have money to fund research. And drug companies fund research that produce results that will pr produce profit. And governments don't have funds to give academic research, they have funds only for bombs. So, Medical profession, medical academics, medical faculties are hamstrung with no funding, so they have to look to the drug companies. So the world over, this has become a big scandal, big time scandal, and particularly in the area of ADHD and drugging, a gentleman called Stephen Bruning. He was a big name about 17 years ago, when this whole wave of children's irregular behavior should be treated by methylphenidate came around, and his research was taken as well done work. Later it was found it's all fake, he never did that research. He was all the time speaking for those drug companies, and he went to prison. Yeah. So he was a pioneer of the wave of prescribing methylphenidate for ADHD. So we are, in my academic uh, sessions with doctors, I'm promoting, try, don't label a child ADHD. Before giving drugs, get him off the screen. Two, try empathic rem remedial procedures. That's uh, my cry to the profession. I forgot at that feeding stage, if you give children vegetables and fruit pieces to bite, as young as possible, then you intentionally reduce their speed of eating and you get their buccal cavity and mastication to go on. So don't blend the food to oblivion. The child must munch, 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 slow down, and that gets their brain brilliant. Understood? Yeah. So, Here's a classification of sorts understanding children as they relate to this so, so many being diagnosed as ADHD. Right brain, what was called right brain, are visually oriented children. They are assessing, processing the world pictorially. So there are children who see pictures and they understand their world from pictures. We want that. They were called right brain children. They were a little dreamy. They were called artistic. You remember that, th that kind of child? They will not learn well in a normal classroom, which is verbal processing. These children are visual processing. Now, if those children are not attended with learning methods appropriate to them, they get jittery. And if you put them on the screen, they are already visually overconnected children and the digital screen will fire them up in the wrong direction. Yeah. So best art is the art that child draws. Best music is the music child makes rather than child listens. Best songs are the songs that child sings rather than child listens. That's what it means to get the prefrontal cortex wired up with executive empathic procedures. This is not rocket science. This is what our parents did to us and what young parents are not doing to their children. Okay? Yeah. Then some children are impulsive from birth, that is, they are more kinesthetically wired. Now it is known a molecule called PGE2, prostaglandin E2 concentration in the fetal brain will, will decide which tracks will get overwired. 
So it's a fact that some influences will properly wire or improperly wire the fetal brain while in the mother's womb. Okay? Now, two and a half years ago, British Academy of Pediatrics managed to prevail upon the Royal College of Obstetricians to make a statement on alcohol. Because usually academies are reasonably academic and not that political. I mean, human beings are all political animals, so everything is political, but I mean, church is also political, isn't it? So, what talk about academies? So, Royal College of Obstetrician is a, is a, is a sort of a, it's, it's not an academic body as such. So, it was known for a long time, every bit of alcohol will affect the child's brain in the mother's womb. Every bit of alcohol. Every bit of alcohol by the mother will affect the child's brain. Now, two and a half years ago, finally, uh, the, the pediatric academies prevailed on the profession and they have made this statement. No amount of alcohol by the pregnant mother can be said to be safe for the child in the, in the womb. So that's a PC statement, politically correct statement. What it means is, mother, please don't drink alcohol at all. How will that sit in South Africa? That's fact. Now it's, it's, it's medical fact. Other thing I should have mentioned is that the American Academy of Pediatrics has got this statement out. Do not give the digital screen before the age of two and a half. They initially said three years, then you know, different, different things made them to bring it down to two and a half. Don't give the child the digital screen in any form before the age of two and a half. You will scramble speech. I'll come to that, but I'll make this statement. Speech is absorbed in empathy and bonding when the mother speaks. Father speaks, siblings speak. And any child can absorb two languages at the same time with phonemes and everything. Two languages, not three. But by hearing it from parental speaking, not from e-learning. All e-learning procedures before the age of 12 blunts the brain. E-learning is a market gimmick. It doesn't increase intelligence. It blunts the brain, particularly scrambled speech. So if someone wants to teach another language, two are possible, you learn the language and teach it to the child as you learn it. Don't put computer screens on, on the language. All exposure to the screen will reduce language learning because brain goes for what is intense. Even in the printed books now, it is understood if a page has more than 40% pictures, child remembers colors and not the letters. Give me a wave on that. So, the, the, the picture content must not be more than 40% even on the printed page. Okay? So, right brain, I, I said a lot under the right brain child, impulsive child. So, there are children whose brain wiring has made them impulsive from birth. Mother will say from uh, six months, difficult to put to sleep, difficult to feed. They'll get diagnosed as ADHD. But we are telling the profession, prescribing external chemicals is not the way to attend on an internally chemically disturbed brain. It's simple pharmacology. If you give an agonist like methylphenidate, a stimulant, brain is full of receptors. So when you give methylphenidate a dose, the brain receptors begin to close up. That's called down regulation. To get the same effect, you have to give a higher dose. Same with alcohol. So when you give a higher dose of methylphenidate, you get side effects. There's no drug that is one receptor specific. All drugs act on different receptors at a higher dose. Uh, so methyl, uh, this is a medical thing, methyl's more, phenidase most effective dose is a small dose in the morning, preferably less than five milligrams. Don't give it every other day. It has a thing called post-synaptic receptor agonist action. When it is given in a very small dose in the morning, 
improves attention at school. That's all. But first try to do it with empathic remedial procedures. Then you have the high IQ child. If you don't give this child Methylphenidate's best effect is to have its post-receptor agonist action that comes with 5 milligrams a day in the morning only, preferably not every other day, every day. Never during the weekends. But any agonist or antagonist for that matter given every day will down-regulate receptors. The basic pharmacology medical students are taught all over the world. But when the pharmaceutical industry wants to make a drug profitable, they cook up, they cook up fake science, fake medicine. Yeah. So high IQ child, if you don't bond him, he will go for the computer machine and make his brain a machine. So with the high IQ child, you have to make that child more, more bonded. You have to give him a timetable after, after school, two to three, whatever, three to four, cricket, you know, that, that's the best game, especially because we regularly beat South Africa in cricket. That's the best game. <laughs> we, we, we have no squabbles about raga, of course. We get beaten hollow. <coughs> uh, so, high IQ children need more attention, more practical things to do. Now, Harvard has done a study and said, get your children involved in home chores that they become more brilliant later because they have got... Uh, in, in early childhood, more you use fingers and toes, the child, more the brain becomes brilliant. The brain tracks infrastructure comes from proprioception. What is proprioception? When I close my eyes, will my finger go to the nose? What do you say? Will my finger go to the nose? There it went. So this spatial sense and the fingers moving around shapes, fingers moving to do mechanoset, you know mechanoset? You know, screwdrivers this way, spanner this way, fingers moving on puzzles, identifying puzzle pieces and fingers seeing shapes and fitting it, and then sh fingers touching shapes. Now the child does not know to call it cylinder, but the brain knows cylinder. Child does not call, know to call it cube, but the brain knows cube. Did you understand that? So all of our development is meant to be 3D. All of our seeing is meant to be 3D. So three-dimensional is two into the power three. How much is that? Eight. The f digital screen is two-dimensional. It is two into the power two. That is four. So when you give the child the screen, you reduce his brain wiring 50%. This is a crime. Parents, this is a crime. And who's doing this? Parents are doing it to the children. And when you tell them, they will say, oh, doctor, the whole world is going digital. What to do? Everybody is digital. These are excuses. We have to be patient with them. But we have to insist, and church has to get involved in this education. Kinesthetic children, I told you, are children who have been wired uh, too much initially. Therefore, they will, a uh, little more of digital uh, impulsivity, they'll go berserk. So the kinesthetic child has to be given physical calisthenics to get his kinesthesia out. I will show you some clips of what we do in Colombo. Then the digitally overstimulated child can get uh, mismanaged as ADHD. Children mechanized in brain for lack of heart engagement and children with other causes for inattention, dyslexia, etc., etc., can also get treated like ADHD. So th that's, of course, up to the medical profession and medical academics to get this ADHD diagnosis out of people's thinking. That, 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 that it's just a lumping of all kinds of child behaviors together to make the prescribers and the manufacturers rich. That's all ADHD is. I'm not denying the reality of wrongly wired brain. But the way to deal with it is not more chemicals. Did you understand that? Yeah. Uh, here is a thing that uh, I sort of conceptualized. All of us, children included, uh, you heard from Etienne. 
we should be wiring our prefrontal cortex well with executive planning, empathic, reflective, creative, initiation, navigation, and conclusion, reward, well done. So the toddler is toddling along, crawling on his fingers and toes. It's better without shoes, you know, because he's touching fingers and toes, toes touching rough surface is the way brain becomes brilliant and he's ambling along in the direction of his mom. That's what he's looking for. Then he's taking the cubes and throwing at her and this, that and the other. And that's what he does when he sees his fiancée also later, but he does it from... <laughs> yeah, so he's just trying to attract her attention. And then mom has to come and bring it back to him and he feels very happy and... Uh, so he's planning something to move in the direction of mom. He's one, two, now he, he does not know to count, but his brain is counting. Did you understand that? Brain is managing. And he says, when I do that, ten times I'm near mom. So some child caregiver has to be there so that he feels empathy enough to go and the caregiver must feel empathy enough to come. So this problem of mom having to work, uh, I think Kasi took this up there. Yeah, some parents have to work both to keep ends to meet. But if your ends are very wide and the ends include three cars, swimming pool, boat, fantastic holiday in an animal park in South Africa, you know, you, you know, these ends will never meet. So when mom decides to make ends meet, you have to define what ends am I trying to meet. Can I have a vote on that difficult subject? <laughs> Yeah, so it's a problem, you know, it's a problem. My daughter is a medical academic, her husband is a doctor. A good thing about medical academics who don't work in hospital, their time is easier than doctors who work in hospitals. Uh, but I see how they manage their time. Their children never get the screen. Their home does not have the television screen. They never see cartoons. They get a lot of reading, uh, they have a grandmother who reads to them and who disciplines them and they have a grandfather who's, who play cricket with them. So that's, that's a nice way to keep your exercises and oxytocin flowing. So this is the top-down prefrontal cortex pathway which we should get into, we, we, which we should train our children into. Now if we give the children the digital screen, it becomes a bottom of regulation Screen does, child follows, child doesn't think. I'll repeat, if you give the screen, screen does sound first, movement first, visual first, child doesn't think. Child is reacting reflexively to the screen. Agreed? Why do you think the screen makes brilliant? Screen makes stupid. That's a fact. So the child gets used to receiving things from outside. He's stimulated from outside. That is bottom-up regulation. That causes dyspathy, impulsivity, repetitive, reflexive, reactive, and it increasingly moves to stress. Stress is a neurochemical statement. Thrill-seeking, survival behavior. And then pain becomes pleasure. I think Brad will speak about this more. And they recruit anti-reward systems. That is, they are, right. Fight, flight, fright. Isn't pathophysical, it's gone wrong. They are always ready for a fight. They are in a fright and they are in flight. What do we do? Let me get to that quickly. What do we do? Uh, these are uh, some lectures. We, these these uh, Air Force officers came for a lecture. This is also Air Force officers. Now, you, this is our church auditorium. Can you imagine in a Buddhist country, Air Force officers coming to a church auditorium and they are coming for a digital science lecture sent by the Air Force commander. So that's how important it is. And since I met Kasi and this winning uh, world needs a father. I'm including parenting slides into the digital slides here. Uh, these are teachers of a well-known school. They are listening to me and there's a point at which I 
give them an interactive thing, it's like a research paper. Also, we have all their data to contact them for any other program. We are always looking for men of peace and women of peace who will pick up on the gospel. We are very intentional. I am a five-star die-hard evangelist. I don't do anything unless someone gets saved. Having spoken to 500 people in a digital science lecture for two hours, if one doesn't get saved, that's intolerable, that's intolerable. That's how I think. I don't tell them that, but that's how I think. This is one of our cards that we use for Empathic Learning Center. Uh, this is grips and ropes. Uh, Brad calls it calisthenics. So this is my own granddaughter, but lots of other children come here. This is grips and ropes. So more you do grips and ropes, preferably barefooted, more you are doing finger and toe proprioception. Agreed? It's rough uh, pressure touch which develops brain tracks. This is a similar one. This is a, we have 3,600 square feet of this in our church top building. It has a separate access. Some people don't know they are coming to church. We don't hide it intentionally, but our empathic learning center has another access. Muslims come, Hindus come. Every Friday I see children and parents. Uh, many of them I witness to also. This is a kid's bakery. So we get them to make things. They are also girls make and boys eat. <laughs> this is our uh, Den and Dare Center. Children have come for this kind of activity. Uh, so this is a Montessori that has visited. That's border wall. They keep climbing like that. And there are crash pads at the bottom. Uh, we are encouraging dad and son to come and do their gymnasium together here. Uh, so it's stewarding thrill. They are in an age group that they are thrill seeking. We want to put them into teams and give them marks and put them into a thrill seeking activity. One of our last uh, activities, uh, the teams were named Trump, Putin, Kim Jong, and, uh, and So this is what children are made to do in teams. Some, are, some activities are tough, some are easy. Uh, one more, those are, yeah. This is in church. This is the church. Yeah, this is church. It's better done barefooted. <coughs> Can I, how do I get the other? Pardon? Yeah, next one. This is a kids' bakery in action. There are the boys making the egg. Uh, there. So we have a strong case that men should never make omelette. <laughs> Once a month, we have a kids' bakery to create awareness of what to do with our what your fingers. So in Sri Lanka, we have a good activity. We have coconut scraped coconut and we have to get milk out of it. So children can be put to that also. So we, you are getting them to help at home as well as. So that's the kids bakery. Finally, this is a 10 acre campus with five acres of this kind of activity. We get digitalized youth and normal youth to come. It has water and make it, and this is the kind of thing that goes on. Uh, this is a challenge course. It has simple ones as well as very tough ones. So we contact uh, coaches of schools and tell them to come with their sports team. So this April 14th, we have a T10 uh, activity jamboree. We call it Thrill Skill Boot Camp. So that's, that's the stuff.